So the first thing that I have to do, and I was thinking about this the other day, and it's something that's been bugging me for a bit, but I couldn't come up with a solution, and I actually saw it online the other day, well, on YouTube, actually, on the FabRats channel, about dealing with the end of the steering column here. As you can see, this guy's boop -a -doop, boop -a -doop, boop -a -doop, boop -a boop and I need to come up with some sort of bracket. So to start, what I did, cut a chunk off of my tailpipe there, then cut that chunk in half. So then the idea is, you take this guy, go over here, and it is just gonna slip under this part, like that. I'm gonna take my other piece, it might not fit on very well because of the schmutz at the end here, but then we're gonna put that over top like that. We're gonna create a clamp. So I grabbed a piece of thick metal from the pile. I marked out my spot here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll cut that out, smooth it down, and then I'll give it a test fit up against the bottom and then I can get my cup in there and we can start tacking it in and welding it into place, drilling some holes and getting it attached to the firewalls. So the bracket is made. It's a little bit rough here, but it's nothing that a little cleanup can't do. So what's gonna happen is that is gonna go underneath here. And then what I'm gonna have to do is just weld on a couple of extra spots there so I can make some tabs and then I can just use these pre-existing holes to bolt through because I know that they go right into the body. I ended up cutting the bottom off here because it was a little too deep. So I'm gonna reuse these pieces to put on the top there. And there you go. Tips are welded on, drilled some holes, and now it's just gonna be a matter of some cleanup. Because I cut things out with a grinder, you can see that we've got some solid gaps in there. Gonna make for a little bit of extra work. So I'm gonna set to welding and getting these uh, pieces done. Oh look, I didn't even tack it there. It completely missed. Oh, well, at least it's tacked there. Bracket complete. So let's see how she fits on here. Well, I shouldn't say bracket complete, bottom of the bracket complete. So there we are. And then there's the upper piece. So it's just gonna sit over top like that. I'll put some pieces out the side. We'll drill ourselves some holes, we'll clamp it down, and then that old girl shouldn't go anywhere at all. And in a snap, we've got those outer tabs on. Didn't take much at all. I'm just gonna drill our holes for the nuts and bolts in there, and then what I'll do is I'll take everything off and pretty it up and make it look a lot nicer. Got this guy out. This is the original speedometer from the Bel Air. Hooked it up to the drill. You can see here. Woo! That'll usually tell us if it's working. So let's give her a whirl. And nothing. You can see it bouncing a little bit. 
so it's probably worn out inside which means that we won't be reusing this guy which basically means that I'm gonna go back to grabbing some cardboard and making a template so where we're extremely lucky is that I do have this bezel that came off of the dashboard which is going to give us the basic idea of our shape and the basic idea of the size it does still have all the screws in the back or the bolts I should say in the back so what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to press this down push the holes through then I can do an outside outline of what I'm gonna need and then I can cut up the cardboard and we can start working from there and I want to keep this too because it'll look cool once it's all back together so speedometer and then what we're going to do is three gauges there now I'm not sure I don't think I have a chunk of metal here big enough for this. I am going to take it off and try it in the dashboard to see how things fit up. Make sure that it's it's going to do the trick, but I believe it will. So I'll head on over there and see first. So there we go. That size fits perfectly behind. I didn't put my hand behind here to push it tight, but it'll be no problem at all. Like I said before, this has got to come out, so I've got to cut that. So one approach that Tim and I have really tried to stick with on this project is to use what we've got. Uh, it's not easy for everybody to just run out to the store and buy the parts that they need. There is a budget that you want to adhere to. There are parts that are coming up that we need to buy, like the Terminator X, for example, to go on the engine that aren't going to be cheap, that are going to push our budget a little bit. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to stick with that one speedometer. And Tim had said the same thing. It's one less thing that we had to buy. Unfortunately, it's not going to work, but oh well. We at least made the effort to try to get it working or to try to, or to see if it worked. We didn't try to make it work. Keeping in that vein, I did manage to find this piece of metal over in the corner of the shop. It is a little bit thick, so it's heavy, but that's also going to be a lot lighter once I've cut this out. I am going to do it with the grinder, so I might be a while. The bandsaw here is broken. So there we go. Got our basic shape cut out. I will admit that was not much fun at all, but it didn't take as long as I thought that it would, so that's fine. Next up, I'll bring it over to the grinder. We'll get this ground down. Made a bit of a mistake there. It's close, but I think we'll get it no problem at all. And then it should look a very nice. And there you go, from that big chunk of metal to hacking it up with the grinder and the death wheel to firing it up on the stand-up grinder. This 
is probably one of the best tools that we ever bought. Man, oh man. I don't know what I would have done without it to make this shape. I, I wouldn't have probably been able to do it here. It would have been a lot of grinding. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line it up with um, the cardboard template so that I can get the holes and then I can start drilling those out and we can get things set into the dashboard. So I've got everything to fit in the dash the best that I can. I had thought about whether or not I should cut these in half and then it would be able to... Um, it's a little bit more flush in the dash. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the nature of having a flat piece of metal versus gauges that were designed in such a way to bump out a little bit to go into that bezel, uh, I'm never going to be able to get around it. So once I get everything together, then I'll see about making it look fancier. There's a little gap, not a big deal. But one of the things I want to do before I do the big reveal is get the uh, holes drilled for our gauges that are going to go here. I've marked off the center one and we'll see how that sits and then from there i'll do the other two get it back in the dashboard and then we'll have a look and then i'll say that's a pretty big accomplishment i'd certainly be happy with that so i'm gonna get at it hopefully get that done relatively quickly so earlier in the episode i was talking about our speedometer here and how i couldn't get it to go then ron dropped by and solved the problem i was doing it wrong I was running the uh, drill forward and it should have been reverse. I guess there's some science that goes along with how it comes off of the uh, transmission that I don't know about why it should be running in reverse. Maybe mention in the comments if you know. But otherwise, we can go back and have a look. And look at that! So now. I'm not really sure exactly what way I want to go. I do know that one option is just to get a GPS speedometer and then that solves any cable problems or any of that sort of stuff. I know a lot of people who have them, they really like them and they aren't that expensive. So for the time being, I'm just going to take a step back and think about things and come back at it and by next week or something like that, have it all figured out. But in the meantime, I do have something to show you. So remember, we started off with this cardboard guy here. And now, after some finagling, some massaging, a little bit of drilling, some muttering, and some mumbling, <laughs> all done and in. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. It does bug me a little bit that we're going to have a gap here, but there's all sorts of different solutions I can come up with, I'm sure, to fill that in if I really want to. I mean, I really don't have to if I don't want to. It'll be fine, and I'm sure the only person that'll notice is me. So that's where we're at there after a solid day's work. And now, that means we're set up for the next step. The next step is going to be pretty cool. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the challenge. So down here in this box is what we're doing next. Painless wiring kit. So I hope everybody enjoyed this week's episode. There was lots going on. I accomplished the things that I had set out to do. So make sure to like and subscribe to keep on top of what we're up to. It's definitely well worth it because there's always something cool going on. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one, folks.